On July 12th, two British warships opened fire on New York City. It must have been quite a shock because New York up to that point was a pretty quiet city. It was a business city. So you had significant support for the rebels, but also significant support for the people who are still loyal to the king. A month later, Joseph Reed, secretary to George Washington, tracks the British fleet massing off New York. Over 400 ships, the largest British naval task force until D-Day. 32,000 British troops prepare to storm Manhattan Island. They outnumber Patriot forces two to one. Just five of the biggest British ships carry more firepower than all the Patriot guns in the city. Reed is awed by the sight. When I look down, and see the prodigious fleet they have collected. I cannot help being astonished that a people should come 3,000 miles at such risk, trouble, and expense to rob, plunder, and destroy another people because they will not lay their lives and fortune at their feet. It's the biggest attack on New York City until September 11, 2001. the rebels will stand and fight. The difference for me was that uh, the British army was fighting for a king. The Americans were fighting for their lives. Plum Martin is one of 500 men standing guard at Kipps Bay. Have a look. The first thing that saluted her eyes was all four ships at anchor, within musket shot of us. The Phoenix. I could read her name as distinctly as though I was directly underneath her stern. The assault begins. September 1776. New York is under fire. In one hour, two and a half thousand British cannonballs smash the rebel defenses at Kipps Bay. Four thousand British troops storm Manhattan. Tough and battle-hardened, a British redcoat has six times more combat experience than a Patriot Army recruit. Get back in your line. Washington watches his army collapse. They retreat along an ancient Native American path that will later be known as Broadway. September 20th, New York, now in British hands, burns. No one knows who starts the fire. But over two days, it destroys a quarter of the city.
it gives you a sense of people who wanted to be free, how much they were willing to endure. The city being burned, the city being occupied, gives you a sense of how much they wanted freedom. More than 3,000 Patriot POWs are thrown into prison ships in New York Harbor. The most notorious is the HMS Jersey, nicknamed Hell. One prisoner Robert Sheffield escaped to tell the tale. The air was so foul that at times a lamp could not be kept burning, by reason of which the bodies were not missed until they had been dead ten days. Nine in ten prisoners die. There is a memorial over in Brooklyn to those that died on British uh, prison ships in New York Harbor thousands of Americans. Over the course of the war, 12,000 Patriot POWs will die in the prison ships, three times more than are killed in battle. The loss of New York is Washington's first defeat as commander-in-chief. The overwhelming British force crushes the rebel army. 